Let's take a look at this problem. So what we have is a woman who's jumping off the ground. So she's in a crouch. And then she pushes down. So as a consequence, the floor pushes upward on her. And at some point, she ends up leaving the ground. She's moving upward at a, some speed. That's what we're trying to figure out in this problem. Okay, And what we're told is the force of the floor on her. Okay, Now, if we know the net force that acts on her, Okay, if we know the net force that acts on her, remember, we can treat this as basically an impulse problem. If we know the force versus time curve, and by the force I mean the net force, force versus time, the area under this curve, that's just the impulse, that's equal to delta P. Delta P is M times delta V. Since she starts at rest, leaves the ground at some speed V, delta V is just equal to V. So we need to figure out the impulse on her. We need to figure out her change in momentum. And we can do that by looking at the area under the force versus time curve. Except there's a complication. And that's hinted at in the problem statement. The force of the floor is not the only force acting on the woman. So when we prepare, we're going to start by looking at a free body diagram. Okay, so let's do that for our prepare step. For prepare, we'll look at the free body diagram. And in any instance, up until the woman leaves the floor, there's two forces acting on her. There's the upward force of the floor, which is given by Fy. That's what's graphed. Then there's a downward weight force. Now consider the different phases of the motion. This phase of the motion right here, Fy is just equal to 600 newtons. Okay, we're going to assume that this phase of the motion corresponds to she hasn't started pushing yet. She's crouched, she's ready to go, but she hasn't started pushing. And so as a consequence, we can just say that the weight force of the woman is 600 newtons. Okay, and that's the force of gravity pulling down around her at all times. We're interested not in Fy, we're interested in F net. And so therefore, we can say this, the upward force on her is Fy, the downward force on her is weight, F net is equal to Fy minus 600 newtons. So we can take this graph and we can turn it into a graph of F net if we do the following. We're going to take the axis and put it here. And then we'll change our values. This is our new zero. So I have zero, I have 600, I have 1200, and I have 1800. And then in the axis, instead of being Fy, now it's F net. Okay? Now, this is the point where she jumps. That's the time where she jumps. This is clearly the point where she leaves the ground. And this is the point where she leaves the ground because that's the point where Fy, the force of the floor, goes to zero. And so we can figure out the impulse on her by looking at the area under the curve. But there's a bit of a complication because I get a positive area for this segment of the curve right here. But I get a negative area here. So what we can do is we can look at delta P1 for this segment. But there's also a change in momentum for this one. And actually, the upward force of the floor is less than her weight. So during this segment of the motion, she's actually slowing down. And so the total change in momentum is going to be equal to delta P1 minus delta P2. We've got to compute the area of this triangle and subtract the area from this triangle, and that will give us the change in momentum that we're looking for. Now, another piece of information that's going to be useful is this. If the woman's weight is 600 newtons, her mass is going to be equal to the weight force divided by G and that's 61.2 kilograms. And we'll keep an extra significant figure because this is an intermediate stage of the problem. Okay, so we're prepared. We've got an overview of what the problem is looking like. We are ready to solve. Okay, and we'll do this in a couple of steps. First off, we can calculate delta P1. What is the area of this triangle. Well, the height of this triangle is 1800 newtons. For any triangle, the area is one half the base times the height, okay? The height of this triangle is 1800 newtons. And then this side, it goes from 0 0.2 seconds up to 0 0.475 seconds, okay? So it'll be one half times 1800 
newtons times this. And as I say, this is going to be 0 0.2 out to 0 0.475 seconds. Okay, and so the time interval is 0 0.275 seconds. So what I get for delta P, which is basically the area under this curve, okay, 247.5 kilograms times meters per second. That's the change in momentum during this phase, but I have to subtract delta P2. Okay, delta P2 this is just 0 0.025 seconds. Okay, it's a quarter of this one-tenth of a second. So it's a quarter of a tenth of a second, okay? The height of this triangle is 600 newtons. So if we calculate the area of this segment of the triangle, it's 7.5 kilograms, meters, per second. I know delta P1, I know delta P2. I take delta P1, I subtract delta P2, and the change in momentum that I get is 240 kilograms meters per second. Okay, that's the change in momentum. But we weren't computing the change in momentum. We're asked for the speed at which she leaves the floor. Well, she started with a speed of zero. She finishes with some final speed. Her change in velocity is just equal to her final velocity. Delta P is equal to M times delta V. And so I can calculate delta V is just equal to delta P divided by M. We know her mass is 61.2 kilograms. And so we can calculate her change in speed, 3.9 meters per second. And that is, in fact, the speed at which she leaves the ground at. So she leaves the ground at a speed at 3.9 meters per second. That's our result. Let's do a quick assessment, because that's crucial in any problem that we do. We want to see if this makes sense. We saw a bunch of problems back in Chapter 2 of people who were jumping off the ground, and this was comparable to the type of answer that we got. So our final result seems like everything is OK. It looks like what we've seen way back in Chapter 2. Two.